Hello, you're watching Shalom Lord News. I'm Donna Villa from Chicago, USA. Here are the latest headlines from around the world. In an interview with Italian journalist Fabio Marchesi Ragona for Canale 5, Pope Francis discussed the spread of war around the world and exhorted everyone to focus on baby Jesus as Christmas draws near. Though he was born poor and persecuted, Jesus still brought hope, said the pontiff. The Holy Father stated that although Ukraine appears closer, there has been a horrible war in Syria for 13 years, as well as in Myanmar and everywhere in Africa, and that we are currently living through a a third world war that is being fought piecemeal. The Pope also emphasized an issue that is greatly concerning to him, which is the attitude of indifference. The Holy Father lamented the horrible attitude of indifference towards numerous destitute refugees, individuals who are suffering this Christmas. A Nigerian Catholic priest who was abducted a month ago from the Archdiocese of Kaduna was freed on December 19. Father Abraham Kunat, who was kidnapped on November 8, has been freed, tweeted by the Pontifical Charity Aid to the Church in Need office in Italy. According to ACN, the priest was taken from the Kurmin Sara neighborhood parish of St. Molumba, where he had been transferred. Father Christian Okewa Emmanuel, Chancellor of the Archdiocese of Kaduna, condemned the priest's abduction in a statement on November 8th. In October, the Bishop of Makurdi, the Most Reverend Wilfred Anagbe, denounced before the European Parliament what is happening in his country, quote, is nothing less than a jihad clothed in terrorism, kidnappings, murderous herdsmen, banditry, militias, etc., End quote. Although the outside world knows the extent of the killings and ongoing displacement of Christian communities in Nigeria, there is what I call a conspiracy of silence, he said. A Canadian who went on a shooting rampage at an apartment complex in Vaughan, some 30 kilometers north of Toronto, killed five of his neighbors, including members of the building's board, on Sunday, December 18. The five victims were found in three separate apartments of the building. Police have since identified the gunman as 73-year-old Francesco Vili. Police shot and killed the alleged shooter, who was a lifelong resident of the building. The names of the deceased have not yet been made public. Additionally, an injured person who was in a critical condition was hospitalized. The mayor of Vaughan, Stephen Del Duca, and the premier of Ontario, Doug Ford, have all expressed their condolences. Through a tweet that reads, I'm keeping you in my thoughts, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau also conveyed his sympathies to the families of the victims. The worst mass shooting in Canada's history occurred in the province of Nova Scotia in 2020 when a shooter posing as a police officer killed 22 people. Catholic bishops have asked Scottish politicians to dismiss a bill that allows people to change their gender by self-declaration. They issued a statement ahead of a December 21 Stage 3 vote to amend and pass the Gender Recognition Reform Scotland Bill, saying that the proposals were unsafe and likely to harm young people. The bill would allow people to change their legal gender within six months by simply self-identifying with a new gender of their choice. It would also lower the age of gender transition from 18 to 16 years of age. In their statement, the Scottish Bishops' Conference said it was gravely concerned about the bill and urged members of the Scottish Parliament to oppose it. They said children must be protected from making permanent legal declarations about their gender, which may lead to irreversible elective interventions, including surgery. Lowering the minimum age from 18 to 16 and introducing a system of self-identification will put more children and young people on the path. Haitian bishops urged local authorities to rebuild civil institutions and appealed to armed gangs immediately to stop the violence as the country continues to experience political, economic, social, and humanitarian unrest. The Conference of the Catholic Bishops of Haiti, in a Christmas message, has once more urged gangs to stop their madness of hatred and contempt for life. They urge local civil authorities to restore the rule of life or law to ensure a better future for the next generation. 
For years, Haiti has struggled with a collapsing economy, unstable politics, and growing insecurity since President Jovenel Moise was murdered on July 7, 2021, and the deadly earthquake that occurred in August of that same year, the situation has become worse. Since then, gang-related assassinations, disputes, extortions, and kidnappings have escalated. These crimes now also target the Catholic Church, a long-standing cornerstone of Haitian culture with various priests being abducted for ransom. Political almoner Cardinal Konrad Krajewski has returned to Ukraine to provide aid that has been gathered in recent weeks and presented to the populace. According to a statement released by the Dicastery for the Service of Charity, the Cardinal intends to bring to the Ukrainian people, through his presence, the fruit of solidarity accumulated in recent weeks. These include electrical generators, thermal clothing, and other essential items. The World Health Organization cautioned that Russia's attacks on Ukraine's energy infrastructure will have an impact on the nation's health system. According to Hans Kluge, WHO's regional director for Europe, two to three million more people are likely to leave their homes in search of warmth and safety. He stated that Ukraine will experience particular health issues, including respiratory illnesses such as COVID, pneumonia, and influenza, along with the unvaccinated population's significant risk of missiles and diphtheria. In drought-hit Senegal, the Congregation of the Poor Clares has requested financial assistance and food donations. The nuns have a presence in the capital, Dakar. According to a statement from the Pontifical Foundation Aid to the Church in Need, the five Poor Clare nuns who came to the country in 2020 sustained themselves by cultivating millet, pinnets, and corn. But the drought has forced them to seek donations for themselves and for those who knock on their doors seeking assistance. The convent, where the nuns live in Endolor, is a temporary structure. In addition to supporting themselves with agriculture, they run a place where they make candles, medicinal ointments, and liturgical vestments. Patriarch Louis Raphael Sacco of the Chaldean Church ordained three transitional deacons as priests at St. Joseph's Cathedral in Baghdad, the capital of Iraq. During the ceremony that took place on Sunday, December 18, Cardinal Sacco ordained transitional deacons Jose Manuel Martinez, Bashar Basim, and Aden Elia. Guests from religious communities and many believers attended the ordination mass with the Apostolic Nuncio and the envoys of Spain, Italy, and Australia. Patriarch Sacco told the new priests that priesthood is a grace rather than an entitlement, so the priest must show humility, obedience, and thanksgiving by kneeling at the beginning of each prayer and psalm. He said that to maintain the flame and to avoid any decline over time, a consecrated person should learn how to constantly renew his dedication. Cardinal Sacco urged the newly ordained priests to hold on to their faith and hope in a difficult time in which society is gradually losing human and spiritual values. Members of the Catholic Women Organization, or CWO, in Africa's Malawi have been exhorted to provide a good example for their families by abstaining from abortion and to uphold Christian principles in their households. Archbishop George Desmond Tambala of the Archdiocese of Lilongwe warned Catholic women against the temptation to accept money to end pregnancies in his address at the CWO National Annual General Meeting. As a church, we also want you to fight for life for being against the legalization of abortion in the country. Don't accept any money to implement projects that would advocate for abortion, said the prelate. The Catholic women were further urged to fight for the rights of the needy, including the poor and the elderly in the country. They were also reminded to especially protect those presumed to be witches because of their old age. 
Pope Francis has named Monsignor Juan Esposito Garcia and Father Evilio Menjivar Ayala as the Auxiliary Bishops of Washington. Archbishop Christophe Pierre, the Apostolic Nuncio to the United States, announced the appointments on December 19 in Washington, D.C. Monsignor Esposito is a priest of the Archdiocese of Washington and currently serving as an official in the Dicastery for Bishops in Vatican City. He was born on January 10, 1974, in San Luis, Argentina. In 2021, Father Esposito was named prelate of His Holiness, which carries the title of Monsignor. Bishop-elect Menjivar is a priest of the Archdiocese of Washington and currently serves as vicar of St. Mary's and Landover Hills, Maryland. Father Menjivar was born on August 14, 1970 in Chatalanengo, El Salvador. Since 2017, he has served as pastor of St. Mary's Parish in Landover Hills, Maryland. The president of the Spanish Episcopal Conference, Cardinal Juan José Omeya, has expressed concern about the low birth rates in Spain in recent years. He deplored the dipping birth rates in a program called Converses, hosted by the Bishops' Conference. The Archbishop of Barcelona also recalled that the figures increased slightly after the confinement forced by the pandemic, although that was a mirage since the percentage fell again, which caused 2021 to be the year where fewer births were registered with 337,380 children. This was 1.15% less than in 2020. In his opinion, it is an issue that Spain and Europe must address and that he considers is associated with the concept of family. Bishop Mario Alvarez Gomez of Itzmina Tadun, on behalf of the Catholic Church in Colombia's Choco, has appealed for a unilateral ceasefire to celebrate Christmas in peace. The prelate recalled the suffering of the people of Choco as the year comes to a close. This year witnessed the highest number of murders in the history of the department, which is 180. In addition, natural disasters have claimed the lives of 34 people, most of them in San Juan province. A huge fire engulfed the homes of 44 families in a working-class area of the capital, leaving them in abject poverty. Four people from the same family were buried by a landslide, the prelate said. The government is still reluctant to tackle the real roots of the problems in this region and denounce the historic indifference. He pointed out the failure to address the lack of public policies to fight corruption, the lack of means and opportunities to transform immense natural resources into prosperity for all. And those are your latest headlines. Do join us tomorrow. In the meantime, you can visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.